Well, June marks World Scleroderma Month, a month to recognise a rare disease that affects around 6,000 people in Australia. For less than 0.03% of the world's population, they've got a whole month. So it's not just in Australia, it's confirmed it's worldwide, but since when? Because last year they only had one day, June 29th. Well, what's changing? Now, scleroderma is a long-term condition of the connective tissue, so it affects pretty much everywhere in the body. So the medical clinic have more information on heart and lung problems, such as scarring of the lung tissues and the progression of lung damage. The lungs aren't looking good, but it gets worse for the heart. So as well as blood pressure problems, you get irregular heartbeats and even heart failure. So they're, holy shit. But, you know, thank heavens, it's only 0.03%. As for causes, the Mark Clinic says it's not exactly sure, but indications are the immune system problems and genetics. The Australian government website, they're a bit more direct. They just say it's a straight-up autoimmune disease, where the immune system mistakenly attacks cells, obviously including in the heart. So the original story was at the start of Scleroderma Month. Well, two weeks later, a smack bang in the middle. 16th of June, this urgent breaking news headline from the Courier Mail. Deadly disease, emerging threat, devastating. This article is behind a paywall, so you can only see the headlines. And they've got new silicosis. Deadly disease turning tradies' bodies to stone. And they're talking about scleroderma, which at the start of the month, they've just started mentioning it. By the way, has anyone ever heard of this disease before this year? And the Herald Sun, on an article also behind a paywall, carried the same headline, except they've got stats worse than cancer. What happened to 0.03% or less than that? Now, you would have thought, you know, work tradies, skyrocketing workers' compensation claims would be big news. I can't find it on Nine News or ABC News. I haven't found it there. I had a quick search. I've only found it in these stories behind the paywalls. I was if they like to want to keep it quiet. They want to let you know because the statistics are going to come out eventually. Oh, yeah, we did report on it, but they're not really reporting on it. Now, all the medical information doesn't say it targets certain occupations or anything. It just says it's an autoimmune disease, which you would think wouldn't be on the job. Tradies wouldn't be just doing something that's unique to them for an autoimmune disease. I mean, what's happened recently that, that, that might cause an immune disease? On, on a large scale, these are skyrocketing, skyrocketing workers' compensation claims. So presumably it's, you know, happening out in the rest of society, just not highlighted by by all of the claims that are coming through. What could it be? God, I'm trying to rack my brain. Pfizer 9th Medical Report talks about how the Pfizer vaccine uh, generates a CD8 response, a killer, uh, a killer T cell response. I've asked you this question pro uh, previously, uh, Mr Murphy, and you've made the claim that the killer T cell will only kill the actual protein that presents on the surface membrane. I've spoken to uh, a lot of other doctors and immunologists and they've said a killer T cell will kill the entire cell. Do you accept that? Rennie really asked some really good questions. I assume most people go to his channel. So his recollection is that Murphy said, no, no, it doesn't kill the cell. It's not autoimmune. It just kills the spike protein. And uh, according to Rennick, well, he speaks about other professionals and they seem to think, no, no, it will be autoimmune. It, it, the immune system will kill healthy cells. Well, what were once healthy cells that are exhibiting the spike protein? I, I don't recall uh, me saying that, Senator. It might have been Professor Scarrett. <laughs> Watching these guys sometimes answer these questions, it, it's hard to believe that they're meant to be the best of the best of us, the highest authority they're in, um, I think there's in Parliament House hearings take place in the capital, you know. And uh, he, oh, I, don't, I don't remember. It's like he's at high school. Oh, it may be primary school. Oh, no, it wasn't me, miss. Oh, I, I think it was um, Jenkins. Okay, well, that's fine. Do you accept that a killer T cell has the potential to, otherwise, to kill otherwise healthy cells? I'm, my immunology knowledge is a little bit dated now. That was such a basic question. That's like right at the heart of how vaccines work. And, uh, okay, some information might be dated, but that can't be. E either you know it or you don't. But what he's trying to say is, well, it, when he's saying that, oh, my knowledge is dated, it's meant that he's trying to say that he never, ever found that out. And I'm now going to have to get up to date and find that bit of it. As if he wouldn't know whether the um, the top doctor, the top health chief health officer pushing this jab, he wouldn't know whether there was an autoimmune reaction or not. No, no, I don't know about that. I, it's, um, I, I never got to learn that. I need to pick up to date. What fucking bullshit. It's like a mechanic going, I don't know whether to put petrol or diesel into this particular engine because my, my knowledge of fuels is dated. No, but uh, I, I accept that that's a possibility. I don't know. I'd have to take that on notice and get some current immunological advice. This is one of hundreds and maybe even up to a thousand or more 
uh, interviews, articles, and media press conferences that he did, and all the meetings that he went to. And at no point throughout the, the entire three years of the emergency did he ever go, oh, you know, my, my, my knowledge is a bit dated on that. I can't really answer that question. He's going to take it on notice. He's already announced his resignation. He's leaving in July, so I don't think he's going to be getting back to Rick. Professor Lang is probably a bit more modern. Would all, well, also uh, be the same in terms of the immunological approach um, for a CD8 cell. So you don't actually understand what CD8 cells do? or Senator Rennick, I understand what CD8 cells do, but in terms of your question, I would need to get some more uh, uh, up-to-date immunological advice. Oh, Mr. Rennick, you're insulting me. I know what that number eight, whatever it was, does. But incredibly, both of us, Murphy and me, right here and now, right as you've asked that question, our immunological um, knowledge isn't up to date. So what they're doing here, these scumbags, is they're making it out like they never knew in the first place. So all this stuff that's going wrong, they're going to say, well, we didn't know when they did know. That's why they won't make an admission. Okay, so it's just either they kill the cell or they don't. That's, That's all not, I'm asking It's not for. actually that, uh, that cut and dried. It's a little bit more complex. <laughs> oh, look, Rennick does a good job, but I'd love to be in there. Well, what do you mean complex? The cell is either dead or alive. There's only two choices. That's not complex. So does it kill the cell or doesn't it? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, it might kind of hang on, get resuscitated. It's a bit more complex. Uh, no, it's not. Oh, I hate these public servants. All right, look, I just want to make it clear. Oh, I'm not suggesting there's any link between, between what they're talking about in this question and answer session and the fact that at this exact moment in time, never before in history, we've now got some disease that used to sit at about 0.03% of the population is now skyrocketing. And all these compact claims are just complete mystery. We don't know <laughs> why it's skyrocketing. Actually, um, John Campbell, he, he brings up a lot of this sort of stuff and he points out that when they're trying to construct a narrative, they've got a big magnifying glass. I mean, they were looking for this stuff in sewage, remember? <laughs> that's how that's how much they were focused on it. Can you put that same kind of focus and energy into all these guys that are getting uh, lifelong neurological organ and heart problems to the point they can't work? They're on compensation. <laughs> they anyone going to do any studies? <laughs> all right. That's it for this one. Did, oh, I just, before I just go, you know, um, I'll put up a video. Just be careful here. And there was like about three pages of side effects for, you know, stuff like a sore arm and that for the flu, for this stuff. It was like 64 pages. It's like 20 to 30 times because it gets into every organ. Uh, this this stuff that um, Brenda Murphy's, uh, oh, gee, I don't know. My, my knowledge is dated on that. I'll get back to you. Uh, when are you resigning? All right, that is it for this one.